This Wednesday, October 11th at 7.30 at Westworth United Church, Winnipeg's Groundswell will kick off their 2023-24 season with a concert called With Glow and Abandon. Performing compositions that have been re written very recently from Canadian composers such as Kevin Lau, Alice Ho, Ian Kusan, and Radia, this concert will feature three of the Prairie's finest musicians, Professor of Violin at Brandon University, Carrie DeWars, Professor of Piano Performance at the University of Regina, Catherine Dowling, and Saskatoon native violist Ryan Davis, who has proven to be one of Canada's viola stars, performing with the likes of the Griffin Trio, Jonathan Crow, Shaw Richard Amelan, Andrew Wan, the Saskatoon Symphony, to name just a few. And joining me here over Zoom to talk about Wednesday's concert, I am joined by Catherine Dowling, Carrie DeVores, and Ryan Davis. Hey, how's it going? Hi there. Great. Mm -hmm. uh, Carrie, I'm going to start the conversation out with you. Uh, you're the guest curator for this concert. Can you quickly talk about how the program uh, came together and how you picked the music that you're going to be performing? Well, I wanted to celebrate a few things. Prairie artists, um, collaboration, new sounds and new instrumentations, and also Canadian composers. So I immediately thought about uh, my very good friends, Catherine, and we've collaborated a lot over these past 10 years um, all across the prairies. And I have yet to work with Ryan Davis, who I'm so thrilled to have as our um, guest composer, um, artist. So, um, you know, our Saskatchewan connection runs deep. So I thought, you know, a lot of these things are about bringing people together and working on mm. projects that are so meaningful to us. So it sort of grew out of um, what is it like to dream? Um, mm -hmm. So there's a running thread with that. And you know, investigating these deep connections that we have within ourselves as humans and our, our experience through the past three years. So all the all the works that we're performing on this program have been written since 2020. Mm -hmm. uh, with this kind of project, uh, there's so many possibilities. Uh, I know uh, that there's been a commission piece for this concert. Can you talk about the commission and how has it been learning learning the piece? Uh, Ryan, maybe I'll throw to you for this one. Uh, absolutely. Uh, so I, I was honored to be included in the, these conversations that Carrie already described, uh, just, just bringing new life to the sort of post-pandemic uh, landscape. And I'm immensely inspired by these two collaborators. So uh, getting an opportunity to compose something for uh, violin, viola, and piano was particularly exciting. Uh, there's not a lot of pieces that I'm aware of that employ that instrumentation, and uh, mm -hmm. it was an exciting, uh, you know, occasion to just sort of uh, use that word dream, dream up what is possible with those voices, knowing uh, that I would have such skilled artists joining me in the uh, premiere of this piece. So I spent uh, the spring and summer months uh, really uh, sitting, sitting down, thinking about what that that all meant, uh, coming together as a as a trio, and then uh, really, yeah, just trying to find uh, ideas that are true to who I am as an artist, but using uh, language that I'm not used to using. Often, I'm composing for myself and electronics, so there are uh, sort of tendencies I'd say I have creatively, uh, and it was really exciting to um, be forced to expand what uh, what I typically do as a, a sort of composer performer so uh we had our first uh you know really exciting foray into this sound world and everything's been coming together very very uh beautifully i'm just so inspired by them and their enthusiasm and making this work come to life so uh what's the name what's the name of the work and uh can you describe it uh, absolutely. So the name of the work is Diamond Up, Diamond Down. And uh, the work itself was largely inspired by themes of resilience and uh, the concept of diamonds uh, only forming after responding to a great amount of pressure. Uh, so the sort of concept of shining throughout the many highs and lows that we all experience. And uh, there was a particular uh, friend of mine that uh, was going through some very, very uh, challenging things. And I was really in, incredibly impressed by her resilience and positivity throughout uh, what she had to endure. And uh, so that's really where the genesis of that theme came. And uh, once I had uh, that in mind, even if I hadn't completely settled on everything, the, the ideas really started to flow after that. Mm -hmm. uh, 
aside, yes, as aside, aside from being a violist, you are a composer, and you go under the pseudonym Radia. Am, am I saying that right? Uh, you, uh, you bet. Yes, yes. And one of the and one of the pieces that you're going to be also performing on Wednesday night is your four movement work of Glow and Abandon. Uh, I've heard it. I've downloaded it. It's it's great. It's this wonderful mixture of viola mixed with electronic sounds and loops and and drum beats. It actually sort of when I first heard it, it reminded me actually a lot of Radiohead. Um, wow. How did how did the piece come about? And can you talk about the piece and how the four names tie into the, musically what you've what you've written? Oh, certainly. Uh, thanks so much for checking it out. That means a lot. And um, I guess I've always had a fascination in uh, many different genres of music. And uh, of glow and abandon is kind of a synthesis of my many loves, trying to unify the sound worlds of classical uh, viol playing along with uh, sort of electronic folk and hip hop influences. So uh, I did want to create a um, a short but uh, um, impactful uh, journey uh, investigating these many sounds. So the the first uh, piece or song, whatever you want to call it, of these four is called uh, Dreaming After All uh, mm -hmm. from a popular Gloria Steinem quote that uh, Carrie has elaborated on in the program, uh, which is really exciting for me. And uh, that is a unaccompanied, uh, almost uh, train of thought soliloquy for the viola without electronics. And it directly segues into uh, another piece of mine called Blood Orange that uh, employs a lot of these electronics and then sort of more hip hop sounds that you might hear with beats, that kind mm -hmm. of thing. Uh, and uh, then uh, there's another piece called Color You Like, which is one of my favorites that I've written to date uh, that uh, is a, a chance of exploring what the viola can do when using these new technologies uh, and really trying to push uh, my sort of virtuosic playing with with more layered work. So there's a delicate dance of what you choose to repeat uh, with looping technologies and what you only play once and uh, mm -hmm. investing in that kind of uh, a compositional arc. And then uh, the final uh, work of the four in of glow and abandon is called set a fire in my snow. As Carrie mentioned, we all have these uh, Saskatchewan Toronto roots. Uh, we're very familiar with snow and these uh, incredible landscapes. And so this uh, has a bit of a pop song structure. Uh, and it uh, is very simple, harmonically speaking. There's only sort of two chord changes that underline the entire thing. But I was really inspired by the harsh winter and uh, beauty that comes with that kind of menacing cold uh, and uh, trying to yeah tie in, I guess, all, all the things that brought me to this place uh, growing up there. So I hope that answers uh, the question. Yeah. yeah, snow is something we know well here in Winnipeg. <laughs> 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 uh, Catherine, uh, I'm going to turn it over to you. Uh, you're going to be playing Alex Pinksy Ho's piece, The Weeping Woman. Uh, it's a piece for solo piano inspired by a painting uh, done by Pablo Picasso of the same name. And the painting is inspired by uh, some of the horrors of the Spanish Civil War. And my understanding is the Alice Ho piece uh, is drawing parallels on the war in Ukraine. Can you talk about the piece? And it sounds like I listened to it this morning and it, it sounds very virtuosic. Can you talk about that piece a bit? Yes, I'd love to. Thanks so much, Chris. You're always so informed. It's wonderful to talk about music together. Um, Alice has a really unique way of writing for the piano. Um, I look at the notes on the page and I think that's impossible. There's no way someone can do that. And, and I, you know, put my blood, sweat and tears into it. And I find, oh, wow, she just has an incredibly visionary imagination for sound and for the capabilities of the instrument. And I think when she's dealing with subject matter, that is, you know, also the type of thing that we can't imagine, right? We can't truly imagine the horrors of um, what, what some, some of our fellow humans experience in, in a wartime, for example. Um, or, you know, similarly disease or famine or any of any of these truly horrific parts of the human experience. Um, there's a for sure a parallel there with the extremes in her writing, the extremes of her sound. And um, then when it's given the third layer of being inspired by another artist's impression of uh, such extreme human experiences, I think that's uh, that's where we land on the very kind of virtuosic extreme. Um, unimaginable way way of sound making at the instrument. So there's also a, a visual element that mm. I won't get into too deeply, but if, if you're out on Wednesday, uh, you'll be able to see how Alice ties that all in together. 
Amazing, amazing. I know exactly what you're talking about. Uh, and it's it is it's a piece that very definitely has a structure. And uh, I saw a video that she was that she did where she talks about these running sixteenth note passages at the end, and it's meant to represent the resilience of uh, of the human spirit. Is is that right? The um, specific place here you're speaking of, yeah, rather than writing like presto or some other typical musical term to mean as fast as possible, she uses the term unquiet. And um, we have had the the first two movements, the second of which is called um, the, the hollow, where we hear through a lot of extended technique inside the instrument, that sense of of like shock and horror and utter utter disbelief. And then coming out of that really extreme otherworldly sound we have this really really running fast passage work unquiet and it it sounds so so disturbed and so anxious as it begins but then it in fact carries the trajectory of the of the music all the way through um until the end of the piece and it i think it sounds resilient it certainly uh taps into your resilience as a performer to try to uh, <laughs> put in all the notes and get through to the end and sustain mm -hmm. uh one of the other works on the program is uh kevin lau's piece uh if life were a mirror uh carrie and Catherine, you're going to be playing this on wednesday it sounds like a really interesting piece i was reading the i was on his website and i was reading the description and it sounds like a really interesting pastiche of uh, the Bach Busoni Chacon from the D minor violin partita and the Carnival of the Animals. And the, there's apparently there's snippets from the arrival of the Queen of Sheba. Can you talk about that piece and the, uh, the inspiration behind it? Carrie, maybe I'll, I'll get you to start it, start that out. Oh, sure. I can, I can go first uh, and Catherine can, can bring it home, but <laughs> yeah, that's a piece that was written in 2020. Um, with all of the hopes of, of all the things to come in celebration of, um, you know, there were some anniversaries like Beethoven, for example, there's a lot of Beethoven, uh, yeah, patchwork uh, reference yeah, yeah. throughout as well. Um, but of course, you know, as we know, that year turned out very differently. So it, it ended up be, being more, more of a, um, a sense of reflection or like a dive into the subconscious of like, you know, what would the word look like in reflection or of reflection of ourselves. So there's a wonderful, as you said, array of, of references to very well known work. So of course, if you're in, in dreamland or, or REM, you might have these things running through your mind, but yeah. what Kevin so brilliantly is that he still manipulates them to have them in their full context but in his voice so it's again like this reflection of like how does one see the perspective of something that we know very well and to make it sound quite contemporary maybe it's slightly obscured by like a different sound or register or the combination between the violin and the piano somehow and it really stretches the imagination which is part of this sort of dreaming in the depths kind of um, thread that that I was talking about earlier. Yeah, Catherine? that was a Catherine? beautiful description, beautiful description. I think what's really exciting about Kevin's music is it sounds completely fresh. It sounds completely energetic. And then he's drawing like really direct lines to um, some of the, you know, great masters of, of Western art music. And not only that genre, he often will be inspired by things as diverse as heavy metal or musical theater. And then you'll hear in his music, while it's totally fresh and imaginative, um, you'll hear these bits and pieces of, that you recognize. And it's not even directly quoting necessarily. No. It's just a really, I guess we would call postmodern way of, look, of looking at, at um, composition. And certainly there's such an element of uh, familiarity and comfort that I think comes for, for a listener when when they hear these these familiar uh, snippets or fragments and can have a whole new experience with them through his musical language. Mm -hmm. And it be sort of in, in our way, this is like the violin and piano um, version of the inspiration that Ryan's talking about, like drawing mm -hmm. upon all of your influences, whatever they may be, and a creating something in your language and and then something obviously for violin and piano a very traditional duo it can create something brand new mm -hmm. uh carrie what can you tell us about the uh ian kusan uh piece that's that's on the program yeah this piece was written in 2020 as well and it was a commission by duo contratante 
um, that year for for their um, ecology pro uh, uh, project. And it's based on the Hieronymus Bosch triptych painting. So another um, inspiration from, from the fine arts masterworks um, called the Garden of Earthly Delights. So it, it, that painting, I mean, one can study that for like a decade and not really fully comprehend what's going on in the painting. Um, but essentially it's, you know, describing or, or, or illustrating like agony and ecstasy, like these dualities of like surrealism, um, realism and all of these wild things that are that can happen in one's life in the human condition. So, you know, on the outset, it might look very serene, like a garden, right? Very bountiful, but there's all of these depths and weird things happening in the corners, which is very much like our spirit, right? Um, mm. And so it, it sort of follows the structure of these panels of the painting. Um, but really, again, it's, it's about introducing this arc of the the natural cycle of life so that's how we're opening the program and it begins with these bells and the piano so it's kind of like a call to the music uh, wow it sounds fantastic uh the concert on wednesday sounds like it's going to be really really great um a concert of canadian music performed by three outstanding prairie musicians it sounds like a canada council grant goal that's <laughs> <laughs> sure. <laughs> it sort of leads. I mean, have the three of you thought about taking this program on tour? Maybe hooking up with Prairie Debut and uh, taking it on the road. Is there are there any plans for uh, moving forward after Wednesday after the Wednesday concert? Well, I think the initial phase was dreaming something up. I mean, I've spent you know eight ten months thinking about this, and and then the second part is just coming together, landing in Manitoba. Um, being in the same place, putting together all of these things and absolutely sparks are flying. Like we're thinking about independently, but also um, probably tonight over dinner or tomorrow over dinner, um, you know, what's next? The, there's so many things that can happen with this project. It's pretty portable. We've got a lot of great things going on with, you know, visual imagery and projection. So there's something for everyone in this, in this program. It's also mm -hmm. a nice length, right? Like it's a 60 minutes of music. So um, it's, it's really graspable. It's, it's not something, um, I mean, the subject matter is really in depth, but it's something really t tickling the senses, mm -hmm. let's say. Um, but yeah, this, this is definitely, you're right. Something that can, is a celebration of all things Canadian. Um, so yeah, I and, think and, there's a future. And you, and you, and you mentioned it before. I mean, uh, there's not a lot of music written for violin, viola, and piano. And so it sort of seems like a prime avenue to sort of start commissioning uh, works for the for for this for this kind of a trio. Yeah, why not? Uh, I'm going to wrap the the conversation up uh, by quickly. Uh, I'm going to sort of go to, go around the room. Uh, what do you hope people are going to take away from uh, Wednesday night, Wednesday night's concert, Ryan? I'll, I'll, maybe I'll start with you. Um, I hope uh, that the the audience member just just feels excited about the variety that uh, has been curated for this program. I think uh, just hearing my uh, colleagues speak about what they joy about these pieces it, it uh for me personally it's a big honor to have my own music on this program at all with such uh big big names in the canadian composition scene but uh i think just having the opportunity as as carrie articulated uh, there's something for everybody um yeah, from my lens just getting to i uh, give this music to a, a province i haven't uh been to in a little while i think that's what i'm really excited about as well as uh, hopefully chatting with some of the people after to hear their thoughts about what they heard that night Mm, Catherine, how about you? I hope that listeners will take away the experience of having their creativity really provoked and stimulated. Um, and whether that leads them to try a new recipe or pick up a book from a different section at the library or, uh, you know, try something new in their garden, whatever way their creativity expresses, I hope that they find their creativity really stimulated. I think our program is filled with a kind of richness of sound, richness of emotional experience. Uh, connected to sound. So that's what I hope for our listeners. Sounds great. And last but not least, Carrie, how about you? I mean, I'll keep it short and simple. I just want our listeners to have that wow moment. Mm -hmm. You know, something might hit them that, you know, they're, they're least expecting them to have that kind of reaction. Maybe they'll say it out loud in the concert, even better. Mm -hmm. Just that, oh, wow. Yeah. Um, 
And that will keep them coming back to say, oh, I want to listen to this again. I'm really curious about that, you know, to peak the next wave as, as maybe Catherine um, is describing something even in everyday life that maybe they'll think about something that they heard and they'll go back, right? That, oh, wow. <laughs> Sounds fantastic. Uh, Carrie, Catherine, and Ryan, the concert on Wednesday at 7.30 at Westworth United Church, I'm sure is going to be amazing, full of wonderful new sounds and musical textures that will be really sonically satisfying. All the best, and uh, thanks for taking the time to talk to me today. This has just been great. For our Classic 107 listeners, if you go to Classic107.com, I have written an article about the concert, and in the article, I have embedded a direct link to the Eventbrite page where you can picture purchase tickets for Groundswell's opening season concert. Ryan, Carrie, and Catherine, thanks again. Thank you so oh, thank much. Thank you. Thank you. What a privilege, as always.